thank you to the committee for inviting me. So I thought I'd focus tonight on, um, there's, on, on picking the myths around vaccination and reproduction. So from feedback from uh, the public, really, I think there's a, a lot of interest around, well, what is the evidence around vaccination in pregnancy? Um, vaccine hesitancy in pregnancy is slightly different to vaccine hesitancy in general, because pregnant women put a lot of thought into doing what's best for themselves and their family. Um, and the second thing that has come up quite a bit is the evidence around fertility. So I'm going to maybe focus on those things um, tonight and hopefully that'll be what people want to hear about. Um, So just to go back um, to the history of vaccination and pregnancy for those who, who aren't aware, and apologies for those who might have heard my earlier talk, but um, flu vaccination, um, you know, we, we give regularly now, but uh, the history of that is the impact of influenza on pregnant women was evident from the earliest recorded pandemics. The Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 resulted in 50 to 100 million deaths globally, but the mortality rate among pregnant women was disproportionately high. Um, flu was a leading cause of death during pregnancy in the 1957 pandemic. Nearly 20% of deaths um, attributable to flu occurred in uh, pregnant women and 50% uh, of the women of reproductive age who died were pregnant. And closer to home and, and time, in, in the US in um, the H1N1 pandemic, pregnant women made up 6.3% of hospitalizations, 5.9% of ICU cases, and 5.7% of deaths. And uh, pregnant women do not make up those proportions of the population. And then moving on to the whooping cough vaccination. So we, we give that routinely now, but the reason is that uh, vaccination in the community had waned. So there was an outbreak in babies in, in the US in 2010, and it was decided to recommend vaccination in pregnancy to try and protect those babies when they were born so that the women would c confer passive immunity to their babies. This was later updated to recommend uh, vaccination in the third trimester of every pregnancy. And then the UK followed suit, but only after they had their own outbreak in 2012. And we followed suit again, only after we had some um, babies who unfortunately passed away here. So um, there, there is a history of vaccination and pregnancy needing to, to see the evidence and needing, unfortunately, to, to um, have, have real life experience of, of what these diseases mean for pregnant women. So one of the questions is, well, did the vaccines even work in pregnant women? And when the vaccine came out, that was one thing we didn't know because, uh, as has been quoted widely, pregnant women weren't uh, routinely included in the trials. Um, there were a few women included in the trials, but inadvertently. Um, but studies now have come out to say that the mRNA vaccine was estimated to have a high vaccine effectiveness in pregnant women, which is similar to the effectiveness estimated in the general population. So if a pregnant woman gets the vaccine, it is going to work for her. So that is good news. So that's only come out recently. Um, and previous to that, there was a smaller study showing that in a study of 84 pregnant and 31 breastfeeding participants, vaccine-induced uh, COVID-specific antibody titers were significantly higher in all participants than those induced by natural infection during pregnancy. Um, and recent published studies of 10,000 pregnant people, 1,500 of whom were vaccinated, showed that the vaccinated were much less likely to suffer severe disease, ICU or death, uh, similar to the studies that uh, Karina has, uh, has mentioned in the general population. So, so that question has been answered and that's um, very good news. But a question I hear again and again is that there isn't enough evidence so, you know, around, for example, the risk of miscarriage people are worried about. Uh, but in fact, there has been some evidence now come out since 2010. There's um, studies showing that there's no increase in miscarriage rates, and these are quite large numbers, over 100,000 unique pregnancies, um, no difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated. And again, again the Gray study, again, a smaller number showing no major adverse events and similar reactogenicity profiles between groups. 
And then we have data that came out of the CDC. So the, the, the CDC has a system for logging uh, adverse events in, in uh, the public and pregnant women who took the vaccine in the US were able to um, uh, contribute their data to the VARS data uh, set and then they published data on that. And again, 35,000 pregnancies and uh, really showing no excess of uh, the usual complications that can occur in pregnancies. So uh, smaller numbers of, uh, uh, of uh, spontaneous abortion than you'd expect and smaller numbers of preterm birth and small for gestational age babies than you might expect actually in the, in the general population. So um, that, that is, is really good. And those studies are ongoing. So, um, you know, we can take comfort from the fact that, in fact, you know, with the AstraZeneca, there was an issue found there. That was because of good surveillance. So there is good surveillance going on all the time uh, for issues. And so far, there have been, uh, to quote Dr. Fauci, no red flags in pregnancy. There's also a study that came out from Canada and they looked at uh, 140,000 pregnant individuals in Ontario and 39,000 received at, one, at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine during pregnancy. And again, looking at things like postpartum hemorrhage, you know, there was no difference. Uh, preterm birth rate was actually uh, lower um, and um, uh, APGAR scores no significant difference. And then if you look at the table on the right, I thought this was interesting, that the, the likelihood of being vaccinated increased as the age of the woman went on. So um, there may be uh, something to be learned there that maybe the younger people felt they didn't need it, their immune system was good enough, um, and, and maybe to do with socioeconomic status as well, the lower the lower half of the left hand side of the graph, you see um, the, the better off tending to have a higher uh, vaccine uptake. So another question that comes across, do these vaccines cross the placenta? And what a woman wants to know, is it going to affect my baby? And you know, it, would I be doing the right thing by getting the vaccine? Um, so the preliminary data was on, on animal studies. Rats who were given the Pfizer or Moderna uh, vaccine gave birth to healthy pups. And obviously when they're doing studies in, in animals, um, their lifespan is much shorter, so they can, you know, they can literally see generations where, where we would take a long time to see that. So that has been very um, helpful. There have been papers showing that the mRNA is only at the injection site, liver and the spleen, but it doesn't get to the placenta. Um, and studies have shown that the nanoparticles associated with the vaccine do not cross the placenta. So these are all things that you hear on uh, myths and things on Facebook that actually we can debunk. They looked at the placenta of vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals and compared them and found there was no damage identified in the vaccine, uh, vaccinated individuals uh, to the placenta. The placentas worked perfectly well. But we do know that there is a mechanism for COVID to damage the placenta. And this rather gory picture on the left is not a healthy looking placenta. This is a placenta that has been taken over by COVID. It's got very, very inflamed. It's clogged up and it's not working. And that can unfortunately, as we found out, cause stillbirths or cause fetal distress needing emergency delivery of babies. So on the one hand, you have COVID definitely causes a problem with the placenta, vaccines do not. And then another question is, uh, the, the million dollar question, how can you know the long-term effects on the babies? Uh, and equally, how can we know the long-term effects of COVID? We've yet to, 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 to look at that question. But we can deduce from other vaccinations. So there has been long-term follow-up after flu vaccines. Uh, seasonal influenza vaccination in pregnancy was not significantly associated with, with adverse early childhood health outcomes among offspring. Also, there's been follow-up of pertussis vaccine, um, six-year follow-up with no uh, adverse effects. And obviously, people will say, well, that's not the same as the mRNA vaccines or, or COVID vaccines in general. Um, but it is true that, you know, we do not have any evidence to show that there's going to be any long-term problems. The vaccine doesn't uh, go into the baby, the good antibodies go into the baby, and that's protective for babies. Then vaccines and fertility has been, um, you know, th these questions have been going around and around. Could this affect my fertility in the future? And um, particularly in younger people are worried about this. So uh, ACE receptors, which are involved in, in COVID uh, infection, 
um, are much more abundant in the male reproductive system than the female system. And uh, expression of these receptors is seen in the testis, um, uh, um, highest observed in, 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 in organs. So it's very likely that the testis will actually be more vulnerable than the ovaries to the detrimental effects of the SARS-CoV infection itself. And in studies that uh, have been done, there's no effects of uh, certainly the, the mRNA uh, Pfizer on female mating performance, fertility, or any ovarian or uterine parameters, nor on embryo, fetal, or postnatal survival, growth, development, or neurofunctional development in the offspring. So no uh, adverse events seen in, in the um, fertility of uh, animal, in, uh, in animal studies. The other thing is to look at those who had IVF, etc., after having mRNA uh, vaccine. And having the mRNA vaccine did not affect people's um, performance in IVF. So they were equally likely to have successful IVF afterwards. Also, looking back at the original studies um, between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, there were equally as many unplanned pregnancies in the vaccine arms as in the placebo studies. So if there was any effect on fertility, you would expect that fewer pregnancies was, would arise in that group. Um, up to 10,000 people have reported post-vaccination pregnancies to the CDC in the US now at this stage. Um, and to date, there's been no vaccine which has been shown to affect human fertility. Uh, and uh, those of us who are of a certain age have had multiple vaccines throughout our lifetime that our uh, parents had the good fortune to avail of, and um, uh, they haven't shown any adverse effects on fertility. So what do the professional bodies think? So ENTIS is the European Network of Teratology Information Services. So they're a group that um, multiple countries are involved. So they have the top pharmacists, uh, medical experts um, uh, in those countries who discuss all the data. And in April, they said that they hold the position that vaccination is currently the most effective measure to reduce the risks associated with COVID-19 disease in pregnant women. Current safety data are reassuring. Um, so that's all the data I, I spoke to you about. And it endorses a favorable benefit risk ratio for COVID-19 vaccination in pregnancy. In May, the Institute of Obstetricians and Gynecologists here welcomed the NIAC decision to offer COVID-19 vaccination to all pregnant women. And in August, because of the uh, changes we had seen with the various waves and the increased risk we felt that was associated with pregnancy and COVID, it strongly recommended COVID-19 vaccination in pregnancy. So the evidence with regard to COVID-19 in pregnancy, there's over 3,000 articles published. It is a very clear that SARS-CoV infection in pregnancy is associated with increased hospitalization, ICU admission, ventilation and ECMO. ECMO is where your lungs and your circulation uh, um, don't work that well and a machine has to take over for you and it's really, really rare usually in pregnancy um, but not uncommon in people in ICU in this pandemic. Maternal mortality has increased by a factor of 22. COVID-19 has been a leading cause of death uh, for pregnant women in the US. For babies, there's been a higher chance of stillbirth, premature delivery and emergency delivery by cesarean section. And in Ireland, between June and September this year, there were 14 pregnant or postpartum women, the recently delivered women in ICU. And uh, when you break that down for women between 15 and 44, it means 14 out of the 27 were pregnant or recently delivered. That's over 51%. And this week, the UK have put out information um, uh, showing that of uh, women hospitalised with COVID, one in seven needed intensive care. Prematurity affected 21%. There was a stillbirth rate of 1% and a maternal mortality of at least four in 100. Usually, we count maternal mortality in the hundred thousands. And in the UK, it would be higher than here. From all causes, it would be something around 13 per 100,000. But to have it from COVID itself, four in 100 is really quite striking. So this week, the RCOG supports calls from the NHS encouraging pregnant women to get the COVID-19 vaccine as new data shows that nearly 20% of the most ill COVID-19 patients are pregnant. Uh, pregnant women have been treated with the therapy called ECMO that I described, used only when the lungs are so damaged that a ventilator cannot maintain oxygen. 
and of all the women in the UK, between 16 and 49 pregnant women made up about a third, which was up from only 6% uh, in 2020. So global policy and COVID-19 vaccination in pregnancy. Um, this shows the number of countries that recommend vaccination in pregnancy in green, Ireland there in the middle. Um, so many countries now, the majority of uh, countries are recommending for pregnancy, uh, vaccination in pregnancy. So where to next? For women who are listening tonight and uh, have seen the evidence and think actually they, they want to avail of a vaccine, Mullingar, the Rotunda, Limerick have pop-up clinics. Um, for those who need information in other languages, that is being made available. The RCPI are updating the Q&A to, uh, to reflect recent information. And I think all doctors, midwives, healthcare workers and fertility clinics have the duty of care to give evidence-based infos. And uh, what all women want is to have a smiley, chuckly baby like the one on the right, who's my little nephew, uh, whose mum was fully vaccinated and he weighed in at a whopping four kilos. Uh, so no problem with the weight there. Family members, siblings, grandmothers all need to acknowledge the strain of being pregnant at this time. And women want to make the right choice. And we need to support vaccination as a protective strategy, that that is the conservative uh, strategy now. It's not the risky strategy. So um, thank you all for, for listening and uh, uh, thank you again for being invited tonight.